right, so welcome back to another video on this channel and today we're doing something a bit different because I'm not gonna lie I haven't really ever spoken about transfers on this channel It's mainly been like, you know, post-match reactions, tier lists, etc But yeah, of course now that the transfer window in England is uh, due to open on Monday Clubs are now free to sign players until the 5th of October Meaning that there's gonna be a lot more transfer videos on this channel to take up the time between now and the start of the next season And yeah, just a quick disclaimer as well, none of these transfers have happened as of yet And yeah, of course they might still not happen before the end of the transfer window However, this is my opinion and these are five transfers as I think will go through before the end of the transfer window on October 5th. So the first transfer now is uh, one that's been heavily documented over the last few weeks and does look, in my opinion, to be going through very, very quickly, and that is Kai Havertz from Bayer Leverkusen to Chelsea for a fee of around 70 to 80 million pounds, it's rumoured to be. And yeah, of course, we've already signed Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech, two brilliant attacking players that will bolster our options going forward, and Kai Havertz could be another one that's coming in to absolutely just make our attack even more lethal than it already is. So yeah, as I've said multiple times on this channel, it does look like Frank Lampard wants to play like a 4-3-3 with a holding midfield and two attacking midfielders and Kai Havertz will slot right in that attacking midfielder role next to either Mason Mount, Mateo Kovacic or Ruben Loftus-Cheek and yeah look I'm not going to kid myself we do need upgrades in the defence as well as the attack because Kai Havertz although he's a very good player and generational talent in my opinion I don't think he will fix up all of our problems immediately simply because the defence and the goalkeeper positions need a bit of work as well and we need like two or three signings in those areas however Kai Havertz will add yet another dimension to an attack that is already littered with creative players and I think that next season we will be the team that every single person wants to watch as a neutral because all our games will end like 5-4 5-3, 4 3, etc. So, as I said, I think this deal is more or less complete at the moment. I mean, all of the journalists are saying that he's already agreed personal terms, and all that needs to be agreed is the 70 or so million pound deal with Bayer Leverkusen. So, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing, as you can probably tell by that transfer going through, if that is the case. And yeah, I can't wait to see Kai Havertz potentially in a Chelsea shirt. Second transfer now is uh, one that's not involving Chelsea, but Jaden Sancho, of course, was rumoured to join Chelsea for a lot of the last year or so, and even a few months, but now I think he will be going from Borussia Dortmund to Manchester United for a fee of around 90 million pounds. See, as I said, there was a lot of journalists towards the end of 2019 and towards the start of 2020 saying that Jadon Sancho was on his way to Chelsea. But of course that was before we signed Ziyech, Werner and now potentially Havertz as well and Manchester United are now looking like the front runners and yeah, realistically to be fair I think Manchester United are the only team really in the running at this moment in time for Jadon Sancho. I mean he could still stay with Borussia Dortmund because I can't really see him joining any other team other than Manchester United at this moment in time. But yeah of course I genuinely do feel that that would be an unbelievable statement of attempt for Manchester United. Of course they have Dan James at that right hand side at the moment. Of course Mason Greenwood has been playing there but Man United will want him to move into the centre a bit more. That's what Sancho can do. I think he can form a very good attacking partnership with the likes of Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba, Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial. And yeah, although United like Chelsea, you know, they're not very perfect defensively, so they do kind of need defensive reinforcements if they are going to challenge for the title once again. However, I do think Sancho, like Havertz, is for Chelsea. I think he would be another attacking player that just adds more goals to Manchester United sides and will offer them more of a threat going forward. Because let's be real, Jadon Sancho, like Kai Havertz, in my opinion, is a generational talent, and that's why I think he would be a brilliant signing for Manchester United should they pull it off. Third transfer now is a uh, one involving the champions Liverpool and it is Thiago Alacantara from Bayern Munich to Liverpool for a fee of around understood to be around 30 million pounds. So yeah it's well known publicly now that uh, Liverpool backed out of deals to sign Timo Werner and amongst other players as well because they didn't have enough money to function the transfer and there is people saying as well that Liverpool won't pull this deal off simply because of the finances however you just cannot turn down a deal of 30 million pounds to sign a world-class midfielder let's be real in Thiago because let's be real Liverpool are not weak in any particular department however over the last year or two we've always said that the main position that Liverpool could strengthen if they needed to was getting in a creative midfielder that can, you know, create chances for the front three that they have. As long as he can adapt into Jurgen Klopp's, like, you know, pressing mentality in the midfield, I think that he could be very much a more creative spark. And Liverpool haven't really scored that many goals this season as much as they did in previous seasons. And that's why I think they're very intent on making this signing happen because I know they have the likes of Jordan Henderson, Wijnaldum, Fabinho, who are very, very good midfielders and suit Klopp's system very well. However, I do think that Thiago will add that little bit of spice in midfield that Liverpool currently lack. And that is why I think that Liverpool would be stupid not to go through with this transfer, especially at the 30 million price tag. I mean, don't get it twisted, that's an absolute bargain for a player of Thiago's standard. And now the fourth and penultimate transfer I've got in this video is Thomas Partey moving potentially from Atletico Madrid to Arsenal for a fee. Understood, I think his release clause is between 40 million and 50 million. And in my opinion, this transfer makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of people will disagree because, of course, Arsenal are heavily regarded as needing defenders in the summer over midfielders and attackers. However, in my opinion, I do think that sometimes all it takes is a world-class defensively-minded midfielder to come in and transform our defence. Now, I'm not saying that this Arsenal defence will turn into, you know, prime AC Milan's defence from back in the day. However, it definitely will help that they have the cover and especially the fact that it will help Granit Xhaka massively you know because Granit Xhaka of course is the creative spark in that Arsenal midfield he's a very he's like a deep line playmaker he likes to ping the ball forward his passing range is very good so if Arsenal can get Thomas Partey in for around 40 million just to stand there next to Xhaka and do all the dirty work for him and let Xhaka be the playmaker sitting deep then Arsenal will form a very good midfield trio with Xhaka, Partey and then potentially Ceballos or another midfielder in front of him and don't get me wrong I do think that they do need another top class centre back to come in there because I don't think Saliba will be at the age required to take Arsenal to the next level just yet which I should Arsenal 
complete the signing of uh, Thomas Partey from Atletico Madrid for the price that they've mentioned. That's a transfer that definitely looks like Arsenal are heading in the right direction and hence why I think this transfer should happen because I think it's a transfer that makes sense from all angles. And now the final transfer in this video is arguably the biggest one in terms of price and not only price but also the calibre of player. Kaladu Koulibaly potentially moving from Napoli in the Serie A to Manchester City for a fee of around I think 60 to 80 million pounds. There hasn't really been a price tag set on Koulibaly because it's been rumoured that Napoli aren't trying to sell him. However, I think if Manchester City come calling with like an 80 million bid, I don't think Napoli will be able to turn that down for a 29 year old defender. And yeah, let's get it right here. Kaladu Koulibaly is undoubtedly in the top five, maybe even top three centre backs in the world of football right now. And look, I know a lot of City fans will prefer if they sign someone like Ruben Diaz or Milan Skriniar, someone younger because Koulibaly is of course 29, only has a few years left in them probably. However, the one thing I will say as well is that Fernandinho joined City when he was like 28, 29. So like, I don't think age makes much of a difference in this situation because if Koulibaly turns out to be anything like Fernandinho, you still get like four or five world-class seasons out of him. And yeah, a lot of people have regarded City's defence as kind of the weak link in their team and the reason why they haven't won the Premier League this season. And that is why I think if you stick Kaladu Koulibaly next to Imeric Laporte, that is just a centre-back partnership to win you every single title available on the market. So yeah, I think this transfer is probably the least likely to happen out of all the five in this video. However, I do think that if Manchester City pull this off, they will 100% win the Premier League next season, no doubt. And yeah, that would bring us to the end of this video. So if you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like on the video. It'd be very much appreciated. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're closing in on 200 subscribers. And yeah, if you do think that I've missed out on any transfers that could potentially happen this summer, then uh, make sure to leave it down in the comment section below. And also make sure to let me know whether you disagree with any of the transfers I think will happen. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. See ya. See ya.